Hey everybody, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future of health? I am talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation. And today we are talking to a startup that delivers fresh produce and healthy meal kits to the doorsteps of Medicare and Medicaid beneficiaries. And now, instead of just being covered by the insurance and by the over-the-counter benefits that those insurance plans offer, they've signed a big deal, a first-of-its-kind deal with the U.S. Department of Agriculture to get these deliveries covered by SNAP EBT. So please meet the founder of this company. It's Farmbox Direct, or excuse me, Farmbox RX, and the CEO and founder is Ashley Trunier. Ashley, it's so good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. I'm so excited to talk to you today about this, and I cannot wait to get into the significance of this partnership with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and getting your delivery service covered by SNAP EBT. But before we get there, I'm hoping you can level set for all of us, introduce us to Farmbox RX, and talk about how the way you're currently getting paid so that we can understand why this next step is so important. Yeah. Um, so basically, Farmbox RX, we deliver food as medicine, uh, and we work primarily within healthcare. So we partner with Medicare Advantage plans, Medicaid plans, um, to deliver uh, boxes of produce, dry goods boxes to their most at risk at, at risk population. So think population that face an SDOH, maybe they have chronic needs, diabetic, hypertensive, um, ESRD, renal failure. Um, and we also work within children. So think uh, that pre-diabetic obese child that's at risk. Um, we're also working with Anthem for pregnant at-risk moms, um, which is a very different vertical than say, you know, our 65 plus population that's food insecure. But I think the biggest piece to remember around what we're doing is, um, you know, how, what is the face of food insecurity in this country? And so a lot of people, when they think of food insecurity, they've always thought of like a child that goes in the refrigerator and there's just nothing to eat. But the reality is if you really count in our senior population, and they may live across the street from a grocery store, but that journey of getting across the street and getting their groceries, shopping, checking out and getting back home is just too big of a journey. So they're actually food insecure as well. So this is really interesting to me. Like, I, I want to get into more about the about food insecurity, because I think like your expanded definition of it is really great. And I really want to dig into that. Talk to me, though, now about this partnership with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and talk to me about how having the delivery of of these healthy foods. Um, it covered by SNAP EBT is so revolutionary. This is a really important thing. You're the, the first one who, who is delivering directly to the home with these fresh produce items, healthy meal kits to be covered and, and allow people to pay for it in this way. Why is this so significant? Right. So primarily the ways we've worked in healthcare to date is we work with the payer and then, you know, the payer pays us for the box. So they identify a population they want boxes to go to or um, an individual you will use their OTC, their over-the-counter benefit dollars. Um, if a plan allows them to use grocery for OTC as well, it's always primarily been where you can go to, you know, a CVS and go buy Advil, things like that. Um, with your over-the-counter benefit dollars, but now you can buy grocery on some health plans, um, which is a rapidly growing market. But then if you think about those on Medicaid, so some states for Medicaid only give, you know, 20 or $25 for healthy food. So 20 or $25 does not go very far for healthy food. Um, and so why this is so revolutionary is because Plans can supplement that $20 or $25 on the state level as a copay, and then the, uh, the SNAP reciprocant can use their EBT or SNAP dollars for the remaining price of one of our boxes. Um, it helps expand you know, uh, food budgets for the month. Um, there's almost a 30% increase in hypoglycemic uh, ER visits at the end of the month because people run out of their EBT SNAP dollars. So they go into the hospital because they don't have anything to eat. So that's a, you know, that's a $20,000 hit to a, an insurance plan, right? So um, being that we deliver the box everywhere that FedEx goes across the country is, an, is another reason why this is so revolutionary. So, you know, Walmart and Amazon have been able to take food stamps online as a form of payment, but they don't deliver fresh food nationally. So you still have to be within a certain mile radius of one of their, you know, their Whole Foods or their DCs. Um, and so if you think of our rural population, they still do not deliver fresh food to them. So the fact that we go everywhere that FedEx goes um, and that you can now use your SNAP EBT dollars to pay for these boxes 
you know, it can eradicate food deserts overnight. I love that. I absolutely love that piece of it. Like it, that, that's the thing to me that is like, uh, that's extra special about your model and, and what you're able to do. I want to go back to something you just said and ask just a quick clarifying question for my own sake, because I'm not familiar with this. So um, as you were saying that the, um, the SNAP EBT benefits helps increase the food budget. Can you give us a sense of what like a typical food budget is? Like you said, the $25 that's covered. So how much more are people able to spend now as a result of having this, this funding available to them? Typically, um, the average amount of, uh, of, of SNAP funds that a, a, a family of one has is anywhere from $164 to $230 a month. Okay. And so that's that's a quite a bit increase wow. from you know, $20, $25. That's amazing. That's awesome. All right. So, okay. So now you're going to be able to accept this. And, you know, as you guys are, are looking forward, you know, to, uh, to what's next, I mean, you've already talked to me a little bit about the business, you know, when we were chatting before the interview, I want to hear some of these great stats again, though, about where you guys are at as a company. So like, tell us where you're at, how many plans you're, you're working with currently, um, how long you've been around, like, give me the, the story behind the story. Yeah, so I founded the direct to consumer side of the company uh, about eight years ago. And then in January of 2020, we launched in healthcare when CMS changed regulations allowing MA plans or MA plans to um, uh, offer food as a benefit to their membership. Um, so we spent a year in, in a pilot mode with one plan to see, you know, how did we affect STARS rating? How did membership grow? Um, and then we went out to market to sell for um, basically the 22 year um, large, you know, large sales team went out to uh, sell to plants. So we basically pretty much missed the 21 year since we were in pilot pulling in data. Um, and we've went in the last 10 months from three plans to 51 plans. Um, and so we've grown 140% from 20, 20 to 21 and 860% uh, in for 21 going into 22. That's super exciting. I'm like, I'm so excited to hear this because you don't often, I feel like in, in our space, there are a lot of people who want to do food as medicine, but don't know how. And I think like you've landed on a model here that really sounds like it's working very, very well. Um, talk to me a little bit more, I think about like, I want to hear a little bit more about the, 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 about how you feel you guys are tackling food insecurity in a way that is unique. And I love what you said earlier. I want to touch back on, on the different, the difference between you and like Walmart's grocery delivery or, or Amazon on grocery delivery. I mean, I, I think it's interesting that a startup is like positioning itself to really deliver on solving some of these problems, not only of, you know, geographic access, but also some of the other things around food insecurity. So can you just say a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So you know, we like to say that we're not a food company. We are a content and a data company. So the food is our way to get the content and education to the member and then pull in data that we can share back to the health plan on, you know, hoping to change outcomes for the member. Um, so, you know, the, the way to combat this on a national level is you've got to be able to de deliver this box nationally. So CBOs are great they're in their own purpose, but someone like a, you know, like, like a United or a Humana, they can't work with, you know, 500 CBOs to really get to their entire membership. They need one vendor of a national solution. And so we deliver the box everywhere except Hawaii because they have their own USDA. They don't allow any produce on the Island. That's not grown there. Oh, um, so you know, I use the example of you get food to people, you've got to teach them how to eat the food. And I give the example of the Peloton bike. Okay. So stationary bikes have been around for a very long time to exercise on. It was not until you put a screen on the front of the bike that has daily content that changes every single day that's drove people to go get on a bike that they've named Peloton. So the same example here, you can send people food all day long. You can give them dollars to buy food all day long, but if you don't educate them on how to take control of their chronic condition, their SDOH need, um, because you know, SDOH, it's not just, it's not just one vertical. There's no. usually several SDOH factors that affect a member. Um, so you've got to educate the member on how to take control of that condition and how to, you know, cook for themselves. Um, and then, you know, the data comes in. So starting next year, we will have um, a full online platform for members to further that education that changes every week in the box. 
um, where they'll go to our website. There's other videos, a whole content portal. Um, and then they can also log, like if they're hypertensive, they can log their blood pressure. Uh, they can log A1C. They can log, we can see how many steps they've taken if they've downloaded our app. And we can share that data back to the plan so that case managers can take a look at spikes and, and get ahead of health outcomes before they maybe have a stroke. And then it's a $250,000 ad right. Rate, right? That's really interesting. I, and that's interesting that you're moving into that space. Is that, that those, the, the, particularly that chronic condition management, chronic condition um, change sector is a pretty crowded. So why, why go in and build it yourself as opposed to partnering up or are you guys partnering up too? We are looking at strategic partners. Um, you know, part of our fundraise is really, you know, we, we say not all money is green. So we are only looking for investors in our fundraise that are healthcare oriented um, because of that strategic, right? So we are looking at some SDOH uh, data, uh, uh, data, co you know, companies okay. now that we can just plug into our system. Otherwise we will build it out ourselves. Um, I do think that, you know, with what we do being so unique around food and then the, you know, content of education, we have an, an entire in-house team of clinicians and content writers um, to, to have the content. That's a big piece of what we do. Um, there is a part of me that says like maybe building this ourselves is the best way to go so that we have control over who we're sharing that data with. Sure. And that makes sense. And I think that that's, a, that's usually what is the genesis behind a lot of startups taking control over that aspect of their business. Do you have any data that you can share with us right now about some of the outcomes that you're achieving? We haven't talked about that at all, other than the cost saving side, which I love. I love talking about the cost side, but I do want to hear some of the, the health outcomes that you've been able to achieve so far. Yeah, so we actually have a clinical study that we're running with Molina of Wisconsin that actually begins November 1st, um, and it's with a hypertensive population um, where we're completely taking over the, uh, the the food and nutrition of their of certain amount of their population for um, six months time. And then we're going to write a white paper on what the outcome was. So it's two meals a day um, for five days out of the week we're taking over. Uh, but a lot of that has to go with member engagement as well. Another pilot we did with Molina was Molina, New Mexico, um, that I just spoke at um, a, a uh, Rise Hedis quality show um, because uh, uh, Molina of New Mexico works very heavily on the Navajo reservation. So that's a very rural member, um, you know, food access, healthcare access, this is all a problem in that, that area. And so they created a very unique um, program within uh, using the farm box benefit and they created a rewards platform basically. And so it was done very unique where rewards have been before, like if you go get your mammogram, you know, you can get a visa gift card that you could go buy a farm box with. Right. Cool. What they did was you got their entire Medicare advantage population got a farm box, but in order to get another box, they had to do something for the plan. They had to, uh, the first box, they had to say what their social needs were. Um, so are you lacking transportation? Are you lacking, you know, healthcare, like uh, health clinic coverage, right? Are you lacking food? Um, are you lonely? Uh, and they had a, out of that, they had um, an 85% adoption of members adopting into wanting another box. I think one of the biggest pieces of data that came from our pilot there was their vaccination rate. They had about a 20% vaccination rate. And then they went when they enticed them with another box to a, above 50% vaccination rate. Wow, that's vaccine. awesome. So that's big. And I think it also goes to saying like, okay, was it truly that they were enticed by the actual box of food? Or was it that this was a new way to get in front of your member, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you send out all this mail that maybe goes to junk mail. Right. Um, and do they actually read it? And so maybe they've, they've been trying to reach out to the member, but the member has not, you know, engaged with the plan. And um, you know, Melina New Mexico said that they've had members that have been members of theirs for quite some time, but they've never engaged until they received the farm box. So maybe they awesome. just you know, ignored mail that came before. Anytime anybody sends food, Food. It's always a, it's always an attention getter, right? <laughs> yeah. And then one other, um, yeah, everybody loves food. Who doesn't? <laughs> um, and then one other piece of data is um, a health plan that we worked with for just Medicare Advantage. So they use use this as a competitive advantage over another plan that they compete with in a certain county or state. 
uh, saw a 200% growth in membership that they solely attribute to the farm box benefit. Wow. Um, and we're working on that white paper now and, um, and, a, and a half a star increase. So, you know, on their member satisfaction. So I think as you really look at adding food to a plan, you have to look at different verticals, like your population that needs it maybe because of SDOH chronic, um, or an OTC level as another way for them to spend over the counter benefit dollars. I think you also have to look at it as member engagement. And that's another piece of data that we can measure um, with you know, members going on to the site and actually engaging with our, our, our content portal is you know, what, what percent of your membership are actually engaging with the content that's going out to them. That's awesome. All right, Ashley, I have to go back to, you had talked uh, a couple of answers ago about fundraising. And as I was looking up Farmbox RX and Farmbox Director Parent Company, um, I'm like looking, I'm like, how is this funded? There's like no information out there. So what are you doing, honey? You bootstrapping this or like what? I'm like, I was like completely confused. And now you say you're raising around. So tell us about the funding. Yep. So we have really bootstrapped the company for eight years. We've really just reinvested profits and um, just grown uh, organically. Um, Congratulations but, on that. That is amazing. Thank you. It's put us in a really great place to raise money at a very good valuation now. Um, but so we, we did take in some venture debt earlier this year. Um, and we did that to get us to a, a little further down our runway around, we knew we were in several bids that were submitted in June and we needed to get those contracts back. And so going from three plans to 51, it hasn't been superbly difficult for me to go out and raise money on the healthcare side because they see this, you know, is it eventually going to be that health plans are going to have to have you know, their own grocery stores, right? Is that where yeah. we're headed to? Um, and so fundraising right now, we are in the middle of our A, we hope to close in December. Um, and we're just using it to, it's all going to, you know, sales and marketing, my sales team, we need to have, you know, 20 more people on the ground and we just need to pour fuel on the fire and we're in a land grab right now. So I tell my team all the time, we've got 40 employees now and, you know, every all hands meeting, I make it very clear, like we are in a war right now, we are in a land grab, like we are going to take this market and food over the next 12 to 24 months before anybody else can even come in this market and spell healthcare. So <laughs> I love that. All right. That's ahead for the funding. Anything else that you want to tell us maybe more strategic about what's ahead for you on like the plan in terms of, you know, after the land is where, as you're grabbing the land, part of the play in there. I mean, I know I had read um, on your website that you guys acquired a business called Harlow's Harvest focused on kids and teaching them how to like, you know, cook more nutritiously or like make nutritious meals and enjoy like fruits and veggies a little bit more. So, I mean, talk to me about like from the strategy in terms of building out, I mean, you're ready have given us so much in terms of talking about maybe building out that tech side for helping with chronic condition data collection and, and understanding like you know what's going on there and helping manage those illnesses among your population but I mean like wh what else is there that might come down the pipe that we could expect from you guys yep we're big now on developing our product around chip so we do have a children's product and so it is a farm box still but the education inside the box is from Harlow's Harvest um, that we did acquire um, which is like a cooking kit for kids, uh, okay. but it actually is really to engage the parent as well, right? So if mom, dad have same outcomes, right, as the child, or they will typically have the same outcomes. If mom, dad are maybe diabetic, um, maybe obese, then the child probably is going to have the same statistics because they are feeding child. So it's, right. it's a box that's larger to get the whole family involved and really teach the child how to take control of their nutrition. Um, pregnant at risk moms is still a big population for us as well. But now we've developed a kit for pregnant at risk teen moms. So, you know, I was 27 when I had my daughter and I was overwhelmed at 27. I can't imagine being 15, right? So that's a very <laughs> different content that needs to go out. Like maybe they have different social needs. Maybe they need to know where to go to, um, to get quick, things like that. Um, another big vertical for us is around autistic children. So we have um, a kit around autistic children for sensory you know, needs, things like that. Um, we are getting ready to announce, I can't say what company it is, but our big announcement is going to come very soon. Um, we are creating a one platform for food on a supplement, supplemental benefit side, but also it's going to market um, on SDOH chronic needs, um, where we will, we're partnering with 
um, a very one of the big uh, frozen meal companies for patient Ooh. discharge. And so we're just creating one stop. So you've got one vendor that gives the frozen meals, for patient patient discharge, as well as our produce boxes and pantry boxes. So it's you know it's it's a much easier on a vendor management level of just having a one solution. I love this. I love all the innovation coming out of Farmbox RX. I love your story. I think it's phenomenal. And, and, and I especially love all the work that you're doing because I think that this is one of those under-addressed areas or it's like, in, in addition to being under-addressed, it's like misaddressed in a lot of ways. Like people are, are missing the right business model to go after it and make an impact at scale. And it sounds like you have got a lock on this. Like, I am really excited for you. Congratulations. It is like this announcement um, about the, the partnership for payment via SNAP is like just one tiny little piece of all the things that you have coming down the pipe. That's so exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Ashley Trenier, she is the founder and CEO of Farmbox RX. And thank you again for stopping by and introducing us to your business, talking about what's ahead. Best of luck to you. You'll have to stop by when this when these big stories break or you close your round so we can check in with you and hear how things are going. I definitely will. You'll be one of the first on my list. Fantastic. I love hearing that. Okay. I'm Jessica Navasa. Thank you so much for joining me. And for more interviews with the who's who of health tech as they are changing the way that we do healthcare, please check out my YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash WTF health. Thanks so much for joining us. Ashley, thanks again.